Let's get to power rankings, you guys. Starting with number 10, they are currently first in the AL West, the Mariners. The Mariners are 19 and 15. They have a pitching staff that you just do not want to, no. to see. You don't want to face any of them. They go into Houston. Really, they played a, a really good series, started off well for the Astros, and then they come back and win in dominant fashion on Saturday and then come from behind and, and tie it late in the game and then go ahead off Hayter in, in the ninth inning and then end up winning the series there in Houston. And it's because of this, the pitching staff. They have been, since early, early April, been the best pitching staff in, in the game of baseball. Their numbers are off the charts. Logan Gilbert and George Kirby have been fantastic. Luis Castillo hasn't even really been that good for so to, to start once, the year. So imagine and, once he is. And there's an argument that he's the best pitcher of the bunch when, yeah. when right. So, yeah, and, and again, George Kirby and, and Logan Gilbert have continued to take steps forward. And I'm, I don't know if I'm still saying Luis Castillo is the best on that staff. But he has the potential to be up there. Bryce Miller's been really good. They're, they're getting Brian Wu back soon. Emerson Hancock's Woo. been serviceable. I mean – this whole rotation, yeah. top to bottom, really, really, really good. And then all you need is just do enough out of the offense. Cal Raleigh, a massive homer off Josh Hader in the ninth on, on Sunday. Cal Raleigh, a homer in, in back-to-back nights. Mm -hmm. it, it just feels like with this team, do they have a good one through nine of the lineup? No. And it's frustrating to watch them sometimes. Uh -huh. But it just feels like if they stay close enough – they got a guy one through nine in that lineup that's capable of hitting the ball out of the yard and have yep. a timely homer, and it feels like they've been doing that more often than night, more often than than not. So, Seattle Mariners uh, not ranked last week. Back on here at nineteen and fifteen. Number nine, also not ranked last week, but after going on a twelve-game win streak, the Minnesota Twins. Maybe the Mariners were ranked last week. Maybe they were a ten. I don't know. Mariners they were, a, were 10. a ten. But I digress. That's okay. On to the Twins. Here at number nine. Uh, they were not ranked previously because to start the year, they sucked. But then you win 12 <laughs> games in a row, and that's going to get you on team of the or on power rankings. Yeah. Because I, I thought the Twins would win the AL Central. I still mm. believe, yeah, I still believe the Twins are going to win the AL okay. Central. And it, all they needed was a 12 game win streak and, and the summer sausage to get them out of the, the cellar of this division. So, Twins are back. They are the most talented team in the AL Central. There are, there's a lot more talent this year. The gap has narrowed mm -hmm. in that division, but I do believe the Twins are the most talented. They've dealt with injuries early on. Things are starting to click for them at the right time. Twins at nine. All right. At number eight, down one spot. Atop, though, the NL Central, the Brewers. Yeah, just a really a good series with the, the Cubbies, and it all it yeah. came down to, to Sunday. Cubs end up winning that series. The Brewers are 20 and 13. Uh, but, you know, to me yeah they lost that series so they go to eight and uh at number seven yeah up is one the team spot, that, that beat the them so i just flip-flopped yeah. them and if you don't understand well, the flip-flop how about you just look at the, the last couple games and the cubs win that series mm -hmm. it was close they were good battles but the cubs have now moved up ahead of the brewers for me in power rankings to number seven on this list uh again up that one spot playing really good baseball 21 and 14 Baseball's fun in Chicago right now. And yeah. I, I'm actually really impressed with this team because they're doing it with without Justin Steele, without Cody Bellinger, without Seiya Suzuki. I mean, sometimes that's when teams like rise to the occasion. Your star guys are out and it's like, come on, guys, do it for them. We can do this. Yeah. And they've look, if you were to tell me that Justin Steele is gonna get hurt early in the year and that Cody Bellinger would have to go on the 10 day IL at a point and miss maybe a, about a month, say a Suzuki missed a, a chunk of time. They're going to get those guys back around the same time. It's looking, it's looking like end ish of May, they should be back. But still the fact that they have done what they have d done without them <laughs> <laughs> is, going, is impressive. Going. The fact that they've done what they've done with they've done what, what they've done. done, done, what they done do. No else has done what they got to do is that number six, the guardians. Woo. Yeah. Still leading that still leading the AL central. The most surprising story of the 2024 season. They're 22 yeah. and 12, uh, and they just keep. It's timely hitting. It's good pitching. It's good. Uh, it's good out of the bullpen. Emmanuel Classe in the back end is is lights out. Josh Naylor has been really good. Big timely homers for that team. Jose Ramirez is a superstar. The Guardians are good. The Guardians are fun, and uh, we'll see. We might end up getting AL Central. I, I would have thought the Twins. I thought it would be closer. Maybe not run away with it this year. 
didn't have the Guardians being a contender, but I did have it being closer with the Twins and, and Tigers and, and maybe the, the Royals creeping in. Now you got four teams that are all, I think, I think going to be pretty good throughout the course of this season. So Guardians right now are the cream of the crop in that division at number six. Okay, moving to the top five, holding strong at that number five spot, the New York Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees are being being led by by Juan Soto. I do not know where they superstar. would be without him. New They're York superstar. 23 and 13. Again, they were at five last week. I'm keeping them put right here at five again. So New York Yankees. Talent, uh, they have done more than enough with, with Garrett Cole out. I don't know how much longer I've heard he's, you know, right. ramping back up. He's throwing off a mound, you know, could be could be back late this month could be next month who, who knows with with Garrett Cole but mm. the fact that they're 23 and 12 or 23 and 13 and he hasn't pitched this yeah. year Yankees fans should be excited thank you Juan Soto yeah seriously yeah okay moving to number four the biggest move of the week down three spots after getting swept by the Dodgers the Braves yeah I I I have my concerns with the Braves I still do believe they're great my concerns come with Spencer Strider that, uh, to be honest with you, now you're, everybody moves up in that rotation. Is Max Fried capable of being an ace? Yes. Is Chris Sale or Charlie Morton capable of being a two? Well, that's where the question marks start coming in. You'd much rather your question marks start coming in at, at number three. when If you can have Spencer Strider and Max Fried as a one and two, that's great. But then you have guys with question marks. Charlie Morton getting a little older. Is How's he going to do? Is 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 he going to get injured? Is he going to stay healthy? Chris Sale, the ultimate. Is he going to stay healthy? Mm. Can he be good for us all year long? So question marks in the rotation. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, they, I definitely had to move them down, move them down yeah. three spots. But, you know, couldn't they did get swept. They're 20 and 12. I still do believe they're one of the better teams in baseball, but they lost to a, a team that is also towards the top of the power rankings. So couldn't be this crazy monumental move. But there was also a, a, another team in the same division that also played better. We'll get to all that yeah. in a little bit. Yeah, okay, so let's get to number three. Down one spot, the Orioles. Yeah, the Orioles end up winning on, on Sunday, which was huge, but mm -hmm. they're 23-11. and 11. I still really like what they're doing. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they're starting to get healthier in that rotation. John yeah. Means back. Kyle Bradish coming back. I mean, this is huge for them. That lineup is so much fun. So the Orioles have been – what, top five all year long? They've been uh, in that one to three range or two to three, two to four range all year long. And they're staying right here. They're 23 and 11. They're winning the AL East currently, leading the AL East. Mm -hmm. New ownership comes in, by the way. I loved this. Yeah, Absolutely loved this. You never see this. New owner comes in. The Orioles beat the Yankees in a series. Guy <laughs> takes to Twitter and tweets, man, what a fun series. I know it's early in the year, but shout out to the Orioles. We're now in first place. Travel safely back to New York, Yankees. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved it. I love everything going on there uh, in Baltimore. So 23 and 11, they're here at third. It's so good. All right. At number two, up two spots and currently first in the NL East, the Phillies. That's right. That's right. The Phillies, the Phillies 23 and 11, playing unbelievable baseball. They are the Sunday night baseball game there against the Giants. So we'll see how, how that one finishes out. Again, we record on, on Sunday evening. So... I, look, I, I know injuries have happened with the Braves, and I know it's very early in the year, but this is my World Series winner. They're yes. playing great, and I did say, let's not all just chalk up the Braves to win that NL East like, the, like this is a guarantee. This Phillies team that often puts it together in, in September and then plays well in October, if we can see their full potential all year long, they have every bit the talent to compete with the Atlanta Braves in that division, and right now... We see a new leader in the NL East. Bum, 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 where they belong. Up two spots, the Dodgers at number one. I wasn't <laughs> even there yet, Alex. <laughs> Pump the brakes. You, you led me there. No. I thought that's what I you were I didn't. Doing. I said we have a new leader in the NL oh. East, and that is the Philadelphia Phillies. I was too the excited. Phillies are rolling and are here <laughs> at number two. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alex is throwing things. She's very flustered. At number one, the Dodgers. They're 23 and 13. They're really good. The offense is clicking. Everyone's firing up, firing right now in that top of the lineup. They just swept the Braves in a big, biggest series of the year. 
Braves at Dodgers. Dodgers sweep them at home. Just massive, massive series. They dominated one of, if not the, if not the best team in baseball, one of the top three teams in baseball in the Atlanta Braves. Swept them at home. Dodgers are the best team in baseball. Uh, so that's the top ten. We go Mariners, Twins, Brewers, Cubs, Guardians, Yankees, Braves, Orioles, Phillies, Dodgers. Thanks for watching. If you like catching up on the latest news around Major League Baseball, weekly interviews with Atlanta Braves legend John Smoltz and your favorite MLB players, make sure you hit that subscribe button.